We have a huge housing crisis in our country, the likes of which we have not seen in a long period of time. But I believe that we need to build horizontally, not vertically. It's one of my speeches. Developers don't like it when I say this, but it's true. The higher the building, the more liberal the voter. It just is. So and if you are the closer to the ground you are, the more conservative you are. We should we should encourage people to spread horizontally and not vertically. Look at Denver. The higher the high rises, has Denver become less free? Or more free. It's become a dystopian nightmare. You guys know that. Now you might say, Charlie, that's a correlation of the causation. Think about it. If you're on the 32nd floor renting, not owning, if you're not in the weeds and in the yard and understanding what it takes to grow food and to maintain the land, are you going to be more or less likely to actually be a conservative? The higher the building, every single study shows they become more liberal over time. It's happening in Phoenix, happened in Denver, happened in Atlanta, happened in Dallas, happened in Chicago, happened everywhere, and yet few people actually say that out loud. You've heard it here first, folks. Uh, if we're dealing with too many high rise buildings. All of a sudden, the libs will come, mm -hmm. right? It somehow transforms the population to the left. Okay. Um, go ahead, John. He has no idea what he's talking about. He has no idea. But yeah. it does at least look like, unlike some other more established right wingers, it sounded near the end like he does have people around him. Who are cautioning against saying that he says nobody says this, but whatever, I'm going to. No, like people are trying to help you though, buddy. They were trying to point out that you're not making any sense, that you don't understand what you're talking about. And the fact that this is one of your speeches, like this is in like your back pocket to, to whip out when you're talking about housing, the idea that if you take a conservative and you you put him on the 30th floor in a couple of years, he's gonna be drinking chai every day. What what are you saying? You don't even know. You you brought up the idea of the difference between correlation and causation, but you clearly don't understand what that point is about. Cities change over time, time passes, populations change. There are many things that can influence the ideological makeup of a city. The fact that you lifted people doesn't by its own nature make them liberals. That's not how that works. You know, he also made a weird point about like, we can't be building upward, we have to build outward, outward. Because if people aren't getting their hands dirty, you know, playing around with the soil, they're not gonna, what? Okay, first of all, um, I just wanted to dispel the notion that Charlie Kirk ever does any manual labor, mm -hmm. including like mowing a lawn. Okay, homeboy came from a super wealthy, privileged family. Like, I would not be surprised if they relied on migrants to do the work for them, but that's a different topic, probably for a different time. But uh, like, I actually love manual labor, especially outdoor yard work, which I can't do. I don't have a yard, mm -hmm. but I like to do the work in my parents' yard. And uh, that has done nothing to transform me to a conservative. Like how stupid are these arguments? Yeah, I and, uh, I do yard work. Yeah. So should I, should I be worried? Am I not gonna be a progressive soon? I do yard work, I do uh, work in my garage, which is on the ground floor. Uh, what about community gardens? Sure seems like a thing that some hippies and libs like. Weird that they haven't turned into conservatives yet. There's <laughs> nothing to this, but again, I'll, I'll go back to my previous point. So long as politics is about the absurd, so long as it makes no sense, so long as it's not attached to reality and it has nothing to do with who gets what, when and why, how politics affects the distribution of resources. So long as it's miles away from that, they are still winning. Yep, yep, it, it's it's really pathetic. But you know, he forgets that his daddy happens to be a big proponent of high rise buildings. Let me remind him. You have one of the landmark buildings down in the financial district, 40 Wall Street. Uh, did you have any damage or did you know what, what's happened down there? Well, it was an amazing phone call I made. 40 Wall Street actually was the second tallest building in downtown Manhattan. And, and it was actually before the World Trade Center was the tallest. And then when they built the World Trade Center, it became known as the second tallest and now it's the tallest. Oh God, oh, it's- That was just- he's, he's such a bad person. Insanity. Imagine that being your reaction to 9-11. Looks like I've got the tallest building in New York now. <laughs> what a piece of trash.